Hi, Founder fans, Jason here. And today's founder is William Bradford Jr., the second attorney general in the history of the United States. Now, William Bradford Jr. came from a publishing family, a printer family, as we discussed yesterday with his father. But William didn't necessarily want to follow in the family's footsteps. He graduated Princeton University at the same time as James Madison, with whom he remained lifelong friends. Uh, Bradford, though, as I said, didn't necessarily want to be a printer. Fortunately for him, a war broke out, and he joined the fight as one of the Patriots. Initially, he was part of the Pennsylvania militia, where he served as a lieutenant colonel, but he was then claimed by George Washington and put in the position of Deputy Muster Master General. And while Muster Master General is a very fun position to say, uh, essentially his job was to support the organization and keep track of thousands of soldiers in the Continental Army. He does this for about two years before falling ill and having to want to study law anyway, he resigns his commission and studies the law. By the time he's 24 years old, he's appointed as Attorney General of the young state of Pennsylvania. He spends 11 years in this position, spanning a whole bunch of different governors or presidents as they were called at the time. Until the Const about the time the Constitution of the United States is ratified, when William Bradford is then, still in his mid-30s, put on the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania. While he's on the Supreme Court, uh, he doesn't decide a whole lot of notable cases for Pennsylvania, but he also acts as a lawyer in the case of West v. Barnes, which was the first court case ever held in front of the United States Supreme Court. Uh, William Bradford was representing the plaintiff in this case, and it had to do with payment of gold and silver for debts. Uh, I'm not going to get too bogged down in the details, because it was the first case, and things weren't quite settled as to how the Supreme Court works. In fact, William Bradford Jr. lost this case, essentially on a technicality, because it was decided once, but to get to the Supreme Court, appeals need to be made, and unfortunately for his client... Uh, he, the client only had 10 days to make his appeal and he had to travel from Rhode Island to the capital in Philadelphia at the time in order to file that appeal. Now this was almost impossible for most people. It was actually one of the main complaints of several anti-federalists about the constitution. Uh, I will note that this issue was pretty quickly remedied. They would start giving people more reasonable amounts of time to file their appeals. So they literally physically could do it. That being said, George Washington, now serving as president, was once again impressed with young William Bradford Jr. And when Edmund Randolph was left Attorney General of the United States to become Secretary of State and take over for Thomas Jefferson, William Bradford was tapped to take over as the second Attorney General of the United States of America. Unfortunately, there's not a lot to tell about this situation because he remained ill and at just 40 years old, two years into his term as the second Attorney General, he passes away still as a very young man not having ever served in the family's publishing business, but having contributed very significantly to the establishment of Pennsylvania, and to a lesser degree, but still very important, the establishment of the American cabinet during the presidency of George Washington. So this is Life of William Bradford. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, William Bradford Jr., I should note. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, do me a favor and hit like so more people can learn about the channel and learn along with us. And if you're new here, subscribe. I put out videos about the American Revolution seven days a week.